Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you a method to level smithing as an Iron Man, as well as make a profit at the same time using the Giant's Foundry minigame. The requirements for this method are as follows. Completion of the Sleeping Giants quest. Completion of the Fremenic Trials quest. 50 smithing, or 30 for a reduced method. And a small amount of money, preferably over 100k, but it could technically be done with less than 15k if you don't mind traveling more. Things that are recommended are going to include the Ice Gloves, either fairy ring access or a skills necklace, and an enchanted lyre. If you are under level 50 smithing, don't worry, a modified version of this can be used at level 30, which doesn't require the Fremenic Trials, but the XP and GP rewards will not be as good. If you have under level 30 smithing, I would suggest doing the Knight's Sword quest to get to 30. If you are unwilling to do the Knight's Sword, then I can't help you. I am starting off with 100k GP and 687,003 smithing experience on the Isle of Jetizo in the Weapon Store. The quickest way to get here would be through an enchanted lyre, but you can get here any way you'd like, provided you have completed the Fremenic Trials. Here I will buy out all four Mithril Claws from the stock and begin hopping worlds, repeating this process and banking at the nearby bank. With 100k, I am able to make eight swords at the Giant's Foundry, so I will need 112 Mithril Claws total for this. If you do not have 50 smithing, instead you will be buying the Iron Scimitars at the al Karad Scimitar Shop instead. Once I have my 112 claws, I will make my way over to Mount Karum. Good ways to get there are the Fairy Ring Code CIR, or Skills Necklace Teleport to the Farming Guild, then run north. Once atop Mount Karum, I will make my way over to the Weapons Vendor in the southwest section. Here I will buy out the two steel battle axes, as well as the two steel warhammers, and start the process of world hopping again, banking at the nearby bank when necessary. Now claws only amount to one bar in the Giant's Foundry, while warhammers and battle axes amount to two so I will need half as many battle axes and warhammers than claws, totaling 56 between the two. Once I have the correct amount, I will minigame teleport to the Giant's Foundry and take a commission from Kovac. The way this minigame works is quite simple, but can be confusing at first, so I'll try to explain the basics as simply as I can. To start off, Kovac will request a sword with two traits. At the Jig Mold, you will select three molds, one for the tip, the blade, and the forte. The ones you want to pick are the ones that give the most points to the two traits Kovac requested. The point split between the two traits is irrelevant, you just want the highest number total. So if you need to make a heavy flat sword and you have one mold that gives 10 heavy but 0 flat, it will still be better than one that gives 4 heavy and 4 flat. Once you set the jig, run towards the bank chest and withdraw the needed materials, which will be 14 mithril claws, or 14 iron scimitars if you're below level 50, and 7 either of the steel warhammers or the steel battle axes. Deposit all these items into the crucible and begin to pour. As soon as the crucible begins to pour, run back down to the mold jig and retrieve the sword. Note, you will have to have no weapons equipped to do this. Also note, if you are not wearing ice gloves, you will need to use a bucket of water on the mold jig before you can pick it up. Once you have the sword in hand, the main part of the minigame begins. You will notice three bars at the top of your screen. The first is the quality. This is set at the start and cannot go up. It can go down, however, which will reduce the rewards. Now, this might seem scary at first, but it's not a big deal. There are only two ways the quality can go down. The first is if you use the sword on the wrong tool, and the second is if you use the tool while not in the correct heat zone. The second bar shows your heat level. There's a small arrow to show your current heat level, and the three colored zones on it show you how hot you need the sword to be for a specific tool. If you need to adjust the heat of the sword to be in the appropriate zone, use either the waterfall or lava pool to lower it or raise it respectively. Quick note. The heat of the blade will slowly lower over time regardless of whether or not you're using a tool, so just be aware. The third bar shows your current progress as a small arrow, and what tool you need to use to progress. There are three tools total, which going from north to south are the trip hammer, represented by red, the grindstone, represented by yellow, and the polishing wheel, represented by green. The order in which you need to use the tools is random, but you will always begin with the trip hammer. When using the trip hammer, you will need your heat level in the red and every time it hits, it will reduce your heat by a little bit, so you will want it as high as you can, without going over when you begin using it. When using the grindstone, you will need your heat level in the yellow, and over time, it will increase your heat level, so you will want to start with it as low as possible, without going under the minimum. When using the polishing wheel, you will need your heat level in the green, and using it will lower your heat level over time, so you will want to start with it as high as you can, without going over, similar to the trip hammer. You will typically need to adjust your heat level with the lava pool or waterfall at least once per tool use, unless you get a sweet spot proc. 
Sweet spot procs happen exactly twice per sword, but at completely random intervals. When one occurs, a yellow box will appear over the three bars at the top. When this happens, you will want to click the tool you are currently using to get a progress boost. Missing one isn't the end of the world. It will just take slightly longer to finish the sword, and if it would cause you to make a mistake, it will not help at all. So definitely prioritize using the tools correctly over using the proc if necessary. Now this is by no means a master's guide to the minigame. There are several small nuances to be picked up to help speed up the process, but explaining them would be difficult, and it would be better learnt through experience. And I am by no means an expert to begin with. I still make mistakes regularly. Once you make your way through the entire progress bar, the sword will be complete. You will then hand the sword into Kovac, who will deposit a nice stack of cash straight into your bank, as well as give you a fat XP drop and some foundry rep. Foundry rep should first be used to unlock molds to increase the quality of the swords, thus increasing XP and GP gains further, before being used to buy other rewards. Just note that molds have smithing level requirements, some of which are fairly high. So all in all, how well did I do? With 100k, I was able to make 8 swords taking a little over 53 minutes, including the time needed to gather materials. My XP went from 687,003 to 774,812 for a total gain of 87,809 XP, or roughly 98.7k XP per hour. My GP went from exactly 100k to 174,236 for a total gain of 74,236, or roughly 83.5k GP per hour. I do have most of the molds unlocked, so immediate results will be slightly lower. But at the same time, I made several mistakes, so the gains could have been higher. While neither of these rates are amazing by any means, the fact that they can be achieved by an Iron Man, especially with so few requirements, makes it a handy way to level up for quest requirements such as Song of the Elves or Dragon Slayer 2, or for whatever strange reason you would need a high smithing level for, without completely obliterating your cash stack. Anyways, that's all I have for you. Hope you enjoyed it and have a nice day.